Welcome to a new video on my home automation open hub and Node-RED series. My last video on Sonoff was uh, the integration with Google Home, uh, which explains how you can uh, control your Sonoff devices using voice commands. But I thought it would be time to look at the application itself because uh, new products have come in, the application have changed itself, so we are going to see the new things that appeared in the application. And I have to tell you, because I'm getting a couple of uh, Son of devices for review. I've built up with a, a bit of a relationship with uh, with the company itself, and um, probably about six months ago, I they asked me if I have uh, any ideas about the program itself. So I sent them a couple of recommendations, which I think uh, the application can be changed uh, somewhat visually, or uh, some of the text can be changed. And I haven't got any response from them, but some of the changes seem to indicate that they might have actually looked at my document. So if you think the application became more difficult, uh, maybe you can blame me as well. But uh, let's see. Uh, you see the usual devices, what I had previously. Um, uh, I also got a, recently got a Son of Basic, which is now on the top of the list, and I have the POW. And there is a consumption because I think the washing machine is running at a TH10 and a touch. Now, if I go into one of the device, I can see that the screen layout has changed a little bit because we used to have three icons on the bottom, which would be share, time and timer, maybe. I don't know how the what the middle one was called and it probably had a different icon. So now they are called share, schedule and timer. And the function of these three buttons hasn't really changed. So sharing is, well, also obviously sharing. The schedule one is the one where you can set up uh, different schedules when the device should turn on and off um, on a day or on a, on a weekly basis or, or you know, one of times uh, defined by an actual date. And of course, time. Um, so what we see now uh, in, in a difference is um, now it's called schedule, which I think it's probably a more appropriate word for this type of function. And you also see this uh, um, item indicator, which is uh, something that we usually see on iOS where uh, the application can show how many messages or emails or whatever you have. For this particular device, it now shows a red two, which means that there are two items or two schedules defined. Um, the red is not really an indication that anything wrong, it's just, uh, it just sort of the color. And also it's the same thing um, that they have done for the timer as well. Um, so that's where you can set up like timers to turn the uh, device on and off after a certain amount of time. So that's something that you start, not something that is triggered automatically. And again, you can see how many settings you have within, within the timer. So now I think it's, it's more, it's a little bit clear based on the description that what is schedule and what is timer. And now we see uh, a fourth icon here on the bottom, uh, the, uh, which is the loop timer. And we have seen this screen, but usually it, well, before or previously it was, it was up here, so when you do click on this triple dot on the top left corner, sorry, top, top right corner, there used to be a loop timer here. So now they have moved it um, down in the main, you know, uh, among the icons. And I think there has been some reverting on the screen as well. So hopefully it just makes a little bit more sense how you can set it on. Um, and so just by reading through the screen, you can see that using this screen you can set up a loop timer which has a 10 minute cycle and then it starts in the status on so that's the initial status you can set here and then after like five minutes within the 10 minute cycle it changes to off so based on the settings what i have here on the screen now it would be like a five minute on five minute off cycle and it starts on the 19th of january 1535 and it's enabled so if you do, do click on complete it will start that um, a loop timer thing. I still don't know how many people use that. Um, other than that, the main functionality hasn't really changed. You click on the main icon and then the switch toggles or you can click on the uh, the icon on the on the main screen as well. There is one more thing because actually they have completed the integration with IFTTT. If you don't know what IFTTT is, IFTTT is an online service which lets, lets you glue two other uh, services together. So you have one service, for example, the EV link where something happens and it triggers another online service, which could be your phone, your Google account, send an email or something. So if, if I log into uh, IFTTT and I look at EV link, the service itself, 
then we can see that um, what they really support as of now in, uh, in, in IFTTT, which again, this is something that can evolve over time, is uh, basically events when you turn something on or off within the EVLink application. So it's any of your son of devices, your wall switches. When you load the EVLink smart home service, you can already see a couple of examples. And I think the first one is the is the one that I could think about the first time because IFTTT also runs on your phone. So anything that happens on the phone, you can be, uh, you can make a trigger of it. One example that really comes to my mind is that um, as you are coming home, the uh, your front light would automatically come on. And that's uh, what you can do. Um, that's the easiest thing that you can do with uh, IFTTT. Uh, so you see here the first one turn on or off your EV link for channel switch when you get close to home. I mean, again, this is just an example. So um, it doesn't need to be a four channel one, but it can be anything. Or for example, you know, track uh, your um, switch usage on Google Spreadsheet. Or, you know, turn off EV link, uh, one of your EV link devices at sunset. You can set the timers within the EV link application, but you can only set them to a specific time in the day. It doesn't support um, sunset and sunrise, but now with IFTTT, you can do it. When you start using the EVLink smart home um, service within IFTTT, you need to provide the user ID and the password that you are using to EVLink. So that's how you connect your EVLink account to your IFTTT account. But you can also create something uh, on your own. So you can go to My Applet and then uh, click on New Applet. And as I said, click on New Applet. So the first thing is this location one. So if I just type location, uh, so that's the location one. So you can create a trigger when you enter an area or you exit an area or you when, whether you enter and exit an area. So the first thing that you need to know is you need to locate your area. So you can here um, provide your home address, for example, here. And then let's say create a trigger. trigger. So that's the, um, the if part of the uh, activity or sorry, the this, uh, what do you call it? The applet. And then now you have to uh, provide the uh, then. So what should happen if you enter this uh, um, location and then we do the EV link. And these are the th kind of things that you can do. So basically uh, turn a four, three, two or one channel plug or switch on and off. So if I select uh, one channel switch, then it is uh, now loading the my devices from the EVLink application. So as you can see, it is uh, listing all my one channel stuff. So it's the G1, the POW, the basic, the TH10 and touch. And then you specify whether it should be on and off. And then you create a trigger. So really simple. I created this applet, I've left home and I was as I was coming home, the, the light have turned on. You can see the video here um, at the moment and it worked you know pretty pretty good i think i was probably like 100 meters from the house when the uh, when the light actually came on so it is perfect for those kind of applications where you want your porch light to be on so or you know, if you have uh, some other lights at the gate so by the time you get there the light is on and you can just easily go in you don't have to find the keyhole in the dark and uh, you know it just works really really nice so that is an example where an external service, in this case, the phone location triggers something in EV link. But um, there was another example also in the uh, within FT, uh, IFTTT as the suggested uh, applets, which was uh, to track your uh, switch usage on Google Drive. And I have enabled that uh, to test it out. And uh, in the basic settings, it said that uh, in my Google Drive uh, account or my in my Google Drive, it's going to create an IFTT folder and an EV link. And within that, it's going to create a spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, what I did is I want to track the uh, turning on my uh, uh, Son of Touch. And that's the Excel file which got generated. So every time I would turn on the, uh, the Touch, whether it's the application or physically turning it on, it would create a new line here so it, it shows the the current date and time and and then it says the device the state and then it also has this link which well doesn't make a uh, doesn't really add a lot of value so here i have only specified that i only want to track my on setting um, 
one of my devices on. If you also want to track when it was turned off, you just create another applet where you say that, you know, if uh, my one channel switch is turned off, then track it in Google Maps, sorry, uh, in Google Drive. But that's what the IFTTT integration can do, and that's how you can extend the functionality which is not provided in an EVLink uh, application by standard. And this is probably something which is going to evolve over time. So at the moment, we can only trigger on uh, switch status, uh, statuses. Maybe in the future, we can also trigger something on the temperature or the humidity which is being measured by the TH10 or the power consumption measured by a POW. So you can do something about it. Maybe you can send a notification to your phone that, oh, the temperature is too high, um, your whatever device is using too much energy. Before I go, I just want to state one more thing. In my previous evening video, I made a rant about how difficult it is to get a new device um, linked or paired to your account. And um, it took me quite a few tries and it was really difficult to do it on my phone. So I ended up doing it on my iPad. Um, so since then, I got a new phone. It has a new Android. So I don't know whether the change is because of the new Android version of a different hardware or because the EV link has been enhanced. But as you can see in the video, I managed to pair my device within, let's say, 20 seconds. So that definitely not an issue anymore. Well, at least it's not for me. I think that would be all about new features and the functionality within the EV link application. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.